Hello everyone, it's Lynn. Oh my gosh, I think we're live on air. Okay, so it took us a minute to get all this set up, but welcome, we're gonna talk about our color for this week. And if anyone's joined me on live, I can see the comments, so I'll be happy to chat with you. So I finally got it figured out. I don't know what magic I did to make it work, and believe me, it wasn't just me, it was really Mike. <laughs> That's who did it. So anyway, so I want to make sure that we know what we're talking about. I've been doing some research, as you do, when you're going to talk about stuff. Um, so I've been doing some research, and I know we want to talk about indigo. But I did want to give you all some like background about indigo, too, because it's really one of the oldest colors that we've made. We're talking like um, two, four hundred, no, six, five hundred BC. Like, that's a long time ago. So anyway, we're gonna we're going to color our little color. So this is our indigo. Can you guys believe we've been doing this for week, almost week nine? This is week nine. It's got a purple tone to it, don't you think? I think it's like kind of purple in it. Did I do that? Did I spell it right? I-N-D-I-G-O. Yeah, indigo. Right. This has been a color that we have seen throughout history. We see it from all over the world. Um, and it was probably because it's, it's a plant-based dye. So when we were first dyeing fabric, we were using plants as mordants a lot of times to add color to our fabrics that we were making. Um, and one of the oldest colors is indigo, and it is a plant-based dye. And we make other colors from it, um, although the deepest color of, of indigo is the blue. And so this is week, where are we on? Week nine. We've been doing this for nine weeks. I make my nines funny. I don't know. I started doing that as a kid. I just keep doing it. My eights are weird, too. So, indigo. Wow, what a great, just great color. And I find that I'm more and more attracted to indigo. This was that color um, chart that we had last week with uh, Robert Burridge. Burridge. Um, so, if we are looking at blue being the dominant, then red, yellow, which is to me an orangey color, and then green, yellow, and then purple, red are going to be our spice colors, and that's going to add to it. But to me, indigo is kind of more this purple blue. Don't you think it's more of that blue, that indigo kind of color? Let me pull this back on screen. I think you can see it. Yeah. It's got even more. It's kind of between your purple blue and your purple even, I think, kind of between these two. So if we look at that, that's going to be like these green oranges or these green oranges I think are really going to have a pop in some of our fabric. But what I wanted you to know and what I think is really super cool is that we've been using indigo since between 6 and 500 BC. And like just in the 1990s they actually found a hieroglyphic in that was able to give them the uh, recipe that the Egyptians were using for indigo. So I'm getting all this information out of The Secret Lives of Color. This is a popular book I bought this years ago. In fact, I knew I had it. And then someone said, uh, another quilt person is doing this book this year, Walk Through Color with this book. And um, she said, you'd be interested in it because it's a color book. And I went through you know those pop-up museums? Have you guys seen those pop-up museums like every once in a while? Like Atlanta gets the pop-up candy museum. I've not been to the candy one because, like, I don't think that's good for you. <laughs> so, but they had a pop-up color museum in uh, Houston the last time I was there, which would have been 2019, and uh, we got to go through this pop-up color museum and it's really just kind of this interactive idea of color and like you walked into one room and it was all painted in black and white stripes and you had these big 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 balls of color that were kind of floating and you take all these pictures and then some were like how does a color smell and you would go in there and there was different 
um, color tubes and you would smell them and it would be like mac and cheese and that's what yellow smells like. And then you would smell, I don't know, I don't remember. There were some that were kind of like, yeah, I don't need to smell the gray one. <laughs> I'm okay with that funky green brown. Uh, <laughs> because we associate color with... Um, we associate color with taste, with smell, with touch. And I just think that all of our senses are combined in how we associate with color and stuff. So, and it affects us. Color affects us. So, blue is and specifically indigo. It's made from a plant. And they use this plant that they, that they would um, pick all the leaves off of it. And then you, you, you boil it for a certain time. And then you get it out and you beat it. <laughs> You beat the plant. Um, and then you, the more you do that, it produces this indigo dye, or they call it, um, it's a colorant that they use to produce different, um, you know, to use for dye. It's a mordant that they use for dye. And it's really kind of this little shrubbery looking plant. It's not a, it's, it's not a, you know, anything that you would think of. But just so you know, like I've got a friend, I don't know if I've told you all this or not, but I've got a friend who um, is into mushrooms. And mushrooms are really popular right now. If you've not seen them, they're like everywhere. And mushrooms are one of those things that they use as natural dyes. And you can get dyes that will simulate, or that used for mushrooms, will dye everything from purple to yellows to oranges to uh, browns. And I guess when I first learned about, you know, mushroom dyeing and stuff, I was kind of like, I, I always thought that mushrooms, I mean, in my head, mushrooms are dirty. You know, they grow on the ground. There's lots of dirt. I mean, I love mushrooms. I eat them. But um, I didn't think about dyeing them. But they use fungi and any kind of mushroom for dyeing. And they get all kinds of incredible stuff. But you can see this indigo color in South America, Central America. Um, it was used for trade routes. Like there's one, there was one story in here that I was reading that it was one of the most valuable products to, that they brought from China. Like it was a part of the trade route and from China. And um, Tutankhamun was buried with some indigo dyed products. Uh, which is like credit part of his burial stuff. You guys probably, I don't know. It depends on how you old you are. If you remember the whole King Tut phase, like it was really popular in the seventies because I think they found his grave, and well uncovered the pyramid that he was buried in, and um, so there was a whole like a lot of people. I think it toured. Oh, that was it. It toured the United States in several museums that you could go see King Tut, which was a, 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 a very young Egyptian king, or pharaoh, I guess that's what they're called, pharaoh, um, who died very young. But they found a lot of his things that they were buried with intact, which made him a valuable find because a lot of the stuff had been, in previous years, had been grave, you know, there had been grave robbers. So they had not found as much as part of that Egyptian culture intact as they did when they found Tutankhamun, which was kind of interesting. But like this dye is used in Renaissance tapestries. You see indigo in headscarves in Africa that are, um, that would be a part of a ceremony to form a man to a boy, or from a boy to a man. Um, you see it in just a ton of different things. It's the wealthiest Romans could import indigo at 20 denarii a pound, which is around 15 times the average daily wage. The prices were so high from this. It's like a really valuable product. And then they were also telling about um, in just one year, in just one year, in 1631, Seven Dutch ships carried a total of 333, 545 pounds of indigo back to Europe, a cargo worth five tons of gold. That's incredible. Like, that's just, so a very valuable color, a color that we have been, like, using for years and years and years. 
Um, you still see this used. It's um, shapori dyeing. They use indigo, um, which is a Japanese kind of dyeing tradition. Um, the other thing that I thought was really interesting about it is we didn't know how to produce this color, a pure indigo color, until 1865, like that we could actually produce it. Um, that wasn't, you know, a laborious. Like, there's a lot of labor to get the color. Now, I know here in the Atlanta area, this is, there's a, uh, there's a college, uh, Kennesaw State University, and they actually teach some indigo dyeing classes. And I've not taken one, but after I have done some research, and I do have some friends who've taken one, um, after I've done some research, I'm like, maybe we should go do that. That would be interesting to go do and to see. So, indigo. And it's what we use to dye blue jeans, y'all. Like, so right off the bat, like just knowing that this is kind of what they use to dye blue jeans. I mean, this is kind of the color that blue jeans come from. Like that is so just across the world. And does not blue jeans, I mean, what color doesn't blue jeans go with? Blue jeans goes with everything. So I think we're going to find this color. It's not going to matter what we put with it. It's going to go with everything because it's, it's just a classic, classic color. And part of me thinks, well, I'm going to switch the overhead in a second, but part of me thinks that it's this classic color that because we've seen it with everything, we're more acceptable for it going with everything. I think when there are some colors that we haven't seen with other colors as being popularized or out in our culture or something, I think that you're going to see much more acceptability with indigo just because it is so, so common to the world, not just our culture, not just the American culture, like to the world. So anyway, it looks like we have got some people joining us. Oh, yay. It does have a hint of purple, Kathy. I agree. I agree. Oh, and some people join me live. Yay. I'm so glad. So, um, indigo. These are some of the indigos that I actually pulled out for me. I don't have a ton of blue in my... Um, in my stash, but I felt like these were kind of some good examples of that. The blue. Here's some with the pink on it. You know what reminded me when I first thought of indigo? When I first thought of the indigo, put myself in the corner. When I first thought of the indigo, I have to admit, immediately what came to mind was I'm going to say it was the 50s and 60s, but I could be wrong on exactly when it came out. But Chanel, the designer Chanel, came out with this hot pink and indigo um, suit. And it was like the rage. It was this hot. The Simpsons even did a cartoon about this suit. And I mean, and I remember in the in the Simpsons cartoon, Marge just kept re you know sewing it together in different ways and i thought well isn't that what we do so i think one of the best colors with indigo is the pinks the pinks are just going to set that indigo off and i just like blue and pink together isn't that pretty that's just so sharp so interesting um i just set a bunch of stuff over here and didn't even stack it the way i should have um but I think pinks go with it. Of course, you're always going to say red goes with blue. Um, and that's not just the American culture. You know, it's going to go with, with blue in a lot of cultures. I mean, uh, so I know red, white, and blue is Americana, but it's also British and France and, you know, so it's not just our color combo. Um, but it does remind me, you know, we're coming up into summer soon, so red, white, and blue. I usually get all my more patriotic kind of decorations and put them on the table and, you know. Although I think the tablecloth I made has uh, lobsters and crab and stuff on it because that's when I want to eat seafood is in the summer. Um, probably just for the spite of it. But I did want to look at, this always thinks interesting to look at. So pink, reds are always going to go with these blues. Aren't these, like look at these owls. This is actually a Japanese fabric. 
Um, it's a heavier uh, weave in it. Um, and I bought it on sale at a uh, quilt shop when they were going out of business. But I just love this little... So this is just this cute little owls. You probably can't tell that these are owls, but they're cute little owls. And they're in the, um, you know, just a different shades of blue. But it's got that indigo and the little dots. This, of course, is our pinks with the blues. So I'm going to keep those around. But I wanted to see... I really... I really like comparing the fabrics to how the um, like kind of your stones and those kind of colors. Like I think when we look at these fabrics, what do they do with like more of our neutral, neutral looks? So these are my stack of neutrals that we've seen a bunch of times, but I want to see it with this. And honestly, let's just do this right here. Like, that is really beautiful with that. Now, it's a high contrast, but that, I think, has got a really neat... It picks up some of those neutral in there. I just think that looks good. Here's a kind of a stone green. That would be beautiful. Now, this, to me, reads more subdued, more... Um, you're going to get more natural kind of stuff in this. I mean, this is like khaki pants and a you know, a navy shirt or something, and that's always going to look good. Khaki always looks good with blue. We, I mean, men's, men's wear, like men's wear. That's exactly what that looks like, men's wear. You know, you're going to go anywhere and see that together. So this is going to read that, and if you're putting that in a quilt, it's going to have that feel about it. Um, I will say all the... I know you guys haven't seen my house, but you've probably seen enough pictures around that all my walls are painted like a like a khaki kind of tan color and I love them and it's been that way for a long time it needs to be repainted but I think I would just paint the same color now here's your brown so look at your browns with the the indigo blue I I just I think that indigo in itself is going to lend itself to menswear um so at, like I don't want to generalize and say blue is a male color. It's not a male color. It's the most, blue is the most used inter interior decorating color in history. So anytime you have, and just historically, a blue and white quilt, it's valuable. It's valuable beyond, from a, from a, um, appraisal standpoint it's valued beyond just being a quilt it's also valuable because it's a popular design colors and so because blue and white has been used throughout history and we've never st not stopped using blue and white it's going to be valuable um, because it crosses into another market People who don't, you know, aren't like oh I love quilts I want a quilt you show them a, a blue and white quilt they're like, oh, I love that bedding, or I love that blanket. And it makes me cringe a little when they say blanket. <laughs> this is kind of one of those greens. It's got a green, but I think it goes with that, too. It's just like more of the stone. A different color, though. There's that green with it. This has got more blue to it than this one does. This is more green. But again, goes with it. Um, then we've got this... Uh, I guess another shade of khaki, like more tan, definitely going to go with it, that kind of stuff. And then this one. This is more gray. That's got more gray. So you can see this indigo will go with a tan or more of a neutral uh, golden undertone. And then it also goes with the gray, which will have more of a blue undertone in the grays because you know when you go to see white um, paints and all that kind of stuff it's always going to be that now the other thing I wanted to bring out and these are bright but the other thing I wanted to bring out is this is uh, so behind me is a crazy quilt and it's my interpretation of a crazy quilt and I'm just going to walk you quickly kind of how to do one of these so how you do foundation it's foundation pieced so how you do foundation piecing is you cut a piece of muslin and you actually do a sew and flip technique okay so i would start with a piece in the center and then i would choose this piece to go next to it i would 
face it right sides together and I would sew on that edge. I would flip, iron it down, and then um, then I would choose the next piece and I kind of go around the edge until I have it all filled because I want to cover this entire um, piece of muslin. So that's what we would call foundation piecing. Um, paper piecing is similar to foundation piecing in that you are piecing on a piece of fabric instead of cloth. The difference is with paper piecing, nine times out of ten you pull it out. Um, there are some instances you don't, and those would be I'm lazy and it's going to hang on a wall and I don't want to pull it out. Uh, when I first started, that's what I did. <laughs> Now, I will say, <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I usually pull them all out. But anyway, uh, the blue and gray does look good together, Teresa. I totally agree with you. So anyway, but I wanted to pull this out because he's saying, remember, that if we do orange, red, or red, yellow, which is an orange color, that's going to look good with our blues. And I'm like... Yes, yes, it will. Look at that. Now, the thing that it does look great with blue, yellow and blue, yellow or blue and orange, both look fantastic together. And I will tell you, if you're a sports fan of any kind, you're going to see these colors in the sports arena very commonly. I mean, I have, uh, I'm of course an SEC fan, so um, we see a yellow and or blue and orange together with Auburn and with other you know uh, SEC kind of things but I will say that my cousin is a Michigan fan and uh, blue and maize which is yellow but blue and maize together you know are definitely look great together now they're going to be high contrast so you're going to definitely grab the eye and when you grab the eye it's going to you know have it's going to be a stark reality so if you are looking for low volume or low contrast this is not going to be your choice you're going to be more in the khakis or the grays or that kind of stuff with this blue so definitely there Oh, yeah, Brenda, that's exactly what they did. They added their scraps to sheets. So they cut the sheets up and then sewed them in a sew and flip method. Now, I will say crazy quilts were, and I know we had this hanging up last week, and I just left it up because I'm like, there's great indigo colors in there. And you can see how it goes with green, how it goes with the turquoise, how it goes with the, the lighter... Um, yellow greens the lighter blues i mean it definitely is in that it will live with all those colors and i think i personally think that um, indigo is just going to be so well with everything only because we're so used to it i mean what don't you put with jeans i put whatever i want with jeans you know all right so oh here's another indigo isn't that pretty just a little dot. This is a cream dot kind of thing, and I think that it's just, uh, oh, Brenda, she left her sheets whole. Wow. There you go. That's interesting. I've not seen it done like that, but that's not to say that it, that it didn't happen. I just haven't seen it. I will say, nine times out of ten, when I'm appraising quilts, someone will bring me a crazy quilt because they were... Um, they were popularized, crazy quilts were popularized between the 1890s and the 1910s. So if you have a crazy quilt in your family that was done by a great grandmother, that's probably when it was made because that was the time that we were making them as a culture in the United States. And part of the reason was um, it was a way to show off your stitching because even though this, like when I showed this earlier, this has got machine stitching on it. And this was a way for me to um, add interest to these crazy quilt blocks, which I did behind me. It's just you can't see them as well. It was a way for me to add interest to the crazy quilt blocks. But also, I, I just have a really big, like need <laughs> to push all the buttons on my sewing machine like it, it I just think it's crazy that we spend thousands of dollars on some of these sewing machines and they have all these beautiful decorative stitches 
and we rarely use them. And I wanted to um, definitely use all the buttons on my sewing machine. So I kind of made it a, you know, just a challenge in designing this quilt that I, and this is a pattern, it's a quilt I did a couple years ago, um, but I'm doing it again with some scraps that I had because I, well, one, I'm gonna, it's gonna become a class, so it's not yet. It's not yet, but it will. Um, but I just think we should use our entire sewing machine. So not just do straight stitch and buttonhole stitch, but we should press all the buttons, all the buttons. Um, let me look over here. Yes, Japanese indigo prints are fantastic. And I think there was an, even a line, I wanna say at least two years ago, where somebody took and replicated shibori techniques that you could buy, but weren't necessarily shibori dyed. Um, so, Anyway, yeah, yes, Brenda, I agree. Or um, Brett, Mary Jo Casey is who said that, yes. Oh, yes, Brenda, she's agreeing with me, right? We should press all the buttons, press all the buttons. Um, we spend a lot of money on these, so let's press all the buttons. Now, okay, so we wanted to look at the black and whites, because I always want to look at the black and whites with um, the, the, the different colors that we have. And I will tell you, Indigo can be so dark that if you're looking at a black dyed fabric and an indigo dyed fabric, they are hard to tell apart unless you're live. Like, I, this looks difficult to tell these two apart. This is blue, this is black. Now this has got some lighter stuff in it, but still, uh, they're, that's rough to look at on the line because of the way that is. Yes. Oh, Teresa says, crazy quilts are too hectic for me. I'd love to do a more controlled quilt using those sewing machine stitches. You know, that's a good challenge. Let's think about that, Teresa. I have to admit, I agree with you on the premise that a lot of the crazy quilts that I see in, um, in appraisals, they are very hectic. None of, the, none of it matches. It's all... And it's a show off of silks and wools and dressing shirts and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I don't, I, I, I agree with you. I never liked the color combo. So what I did in this is even though it looks like it's crazy, whatever, the colors were very specifically chosen. And what the trick, the trick is this. So you know how you buy a charm pack and you're like, what am I gonna do with this charm pack? So what I did with the charm pack is I cut it up and I put it in the center of all my blocks. And then all I had to think about was what matches that? So when I chose my fabrics to go around it, I'm looking at just this, does it match this? So then I already know these go together because they were in the same charm pack. So that's my tying element that I let the designer do. And then when I was done, I got something like that. So it was a crazy quilt using a lot of scraps, which I like to use my scraps. I don't like to throw away my scraps. It, that's a, you know, a thing with me. I like to figure out how to use all my scraps. Um, and then uh, that gave it more of a cohesiveness um, and a look. So that's what I did. But I like your challenge of a more controlled using those machine stitches. Hmm. Now you're going to make me think, what can we do with that? All right, so you can see where I was telling you earlier, though, the, the indigo and the black, um, that's really hard to tell apart. Not that it's a bad color combination. It's just not gonna be as stark as we saw some of the others earlier. Now, if we use more black, more white with black, it's gonna look fine, you know? You're gonna be able to tell the difference between those two. I mean, and come on, I think white and blue looks really sharp together. Like I remember when I was in, I found, you know how you do, this looks good together. I like those two together a lot. 
So somebody was posting pictures of the 1980s. So I went to high school in the 1980s. That's how old I am. Um, and <laughs> apparently in our church choir, I t- and I didn't remember this until they posted the picture. In our church choir, all the girls got together. And we had to go to Kmart because that was like the store in town. I went to a really, I grew up in a really small town. It had to be Kmart. Um, and we got all these blue and white or white with blue trim sailor dresses. And so it had to be early 80s. And we had all, all of us had all these little sailor dresses. And apparently we did some, I, I guess we did some, you know, song, choral thing, because I was in the choir at church and stuff. So I really like these together. That looks good. So blue and white will always go together because sailor dresses. <laughs> I'm sure other people had reasons to. Oh, look at that. Like, don't you love that? That gold and... I know. Look at that. This is that goldenrod color that uh, that I am still in love with. I mean, well, I've got goldenrod on right now, so you know I love goldenrod. It goes with this too. And look, there's little blue flowers. But I like the goldenrod with it. That looks great. Um, oh, here's another one. Isn't that cute? I must have bought all these together because I grabbed them all at the same time. But that's cute. The little origami bunnies. I knew I liked this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little origami bunny. Well, you know that's Japanese because um, that's where origami came from. But pink and blue, I just think it's, it just reminds me of that Chanel. I'm going to have to look up that Simpsons episode because I'm telling you it was real. And I remember Mark, and I don't watch a lot of Simpsons, so that's weird that I remember that. Okay. This is something that I pulled that I thought, well, I wonder if this will go with the blue, is the um, this green, because this color is coming back, y'all. We're seeing more and more of this kind of green. And let me tell you, this is retro fabric right here. This came from, it's Waverly fabric. It's polished cotton. Not everybody will remember polished cotton, but co- polished cotton was very big in the 80s and a little bit into the 90s, but this is Waverly Fabric. Um, and I guess I bought it at Hancock Fabrics, and I probably have 10 yards of it. I don't know why I have so much. Um, but I like the blue and green together. I just think that's a really nice color combo. Yeah, I agree with you, Teresa. It Until you start looking at this stuff and comparing them, it does, there are some colors that will change color. And I have a quilt to prove it too, because I bought, I bought some fabric, and everybody who, when I bought it, said, "Oh, that's gray." And when you put it up against this quilt, it looks purple. It changed. It ch- it totally changed. So I, you know, this looks good with that too. And this has got a lot of gray and white and teal. I really pulled it because of the orange. Of course, now we're gonna love blue and orange together. That looks red on the screen. It looks like a bright red, but it is an orange. That is an orange. So blue and orange are always going to look good together. It does remind me of Auburn, so. (laughs) I'm a sports fan. It reminds me of Auburn. But the, I should have said, oh, I can't believe I didn't say that. I should have said that the gold and, um, the gold and blue remind me of not Michigan, but the Predators, which is a hockey team, if you don't know. It's a hockey team, so we watch hockey at our house. We enjoy it. My husband played hockey growing up, so he was a hockey fan. It was actually, I think, our second date. He's like, I'm playing hockey at this ice rink in Knoxville, and he goes, you wanna come? So I went and watched him play. I was a sucker. I liked the boy. What can I say? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I like, well, I like, I like this kind of muted orange with it. I think more than I like the brighter orange. The muted orange to me is a some more sophisticated look. This is a more sports team look. Not that that's bad. I'm just saying it just gives me a different feel kind of thing. 
I bought this orange plaid because I just love plaids. I love plaids. Do y'all love plaids? Love plaids. How do you feel about plaids? Plaids are awesome. Okay, I know we pulled these last time, but I did want to see them against this. <gasps> oh my gosh. That needs to be something right here. Not this one. This one's too bright for me. I mean, it works, but that's glow in the dark. Glow in the dark. Nope. I don't love it. This. This needs to live together. This is an old Tula pink. This needs to live together. That's just... You know, and I think... Oh, gosh. Now I'm thinking about this. My mother... <laughs> Okay, my mother's bedroom, when we lived, well, her bedroom was this green and blue. And it had to be in the 60s, 70s when it was that. Oh, I heart pleads too, Brenda. They're my favorite. But don't, this is, I mean, y'all, right here. This needs to live together. Oh, I know, I'm a Paisley fan too. I love Paisley. I love plaids. I love design, but yeah, anyway. So look at that. That is just really, I like, th these may have to live together in something. Hmm. I wonder what I'm going to do with it. Because I'm working on some projects, and I'm going to tell you all about it in a minute. Uh, so these were some of the blues that we had last week. <coughs> So I just wanted to show you those blues against the other and see if you liked that. Isn't that, I mean, not necessarily my cup of tea. It's going to work. It's going to work. It may not be my favorite. Uh, they work because they're all blue, but it's not. I wouldn't go there. Now, the gray's not bad. There's a gray. Teal. I think what, it did depend on what I put with it. Okay, I pulled some purple too, because I think you're gonna love the purple with the blue. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, this is hand dyed, so anytime you have hand dyed stuff, I had to get a drink. Anytime you have any hand dyed stuff, I think you definitely, um, you know, it gives you that modeled effect. So y'all, I've been studying up on how to dye some things. I think I'm gonna, I know I've said that for the past two weeks. I've been so busy. I have been so busy. Oh, I love the purple with it. Look at this. Of course purple goes with blue. But isn't this one of the, um, okay, so purple, blue. We did this. Oh, this is kind of that spice color, right? That he was talking about. I think that's an interesting color palette. That's why I keep playing with it. I keep going back to it and going, what can it show me? What can it tell me? What can I learn from it? It's always my thought process. But I do like this. I like that purple and blue together. That's really pretty. My favorite so far is the green, though. I think this is going to be... See, that muted green, though, is better, don't you think? The muted one, I kind of liked that better. All right, so I pulled out some peaches. Kind of peachy. I think peach and blue go together. Yeah, peach and blue. I like those. Okay, and then here's this. I this is I, I don't love that. That may be a little. Those don't work. Now, pink works with blue, and light blue works with blue, but it does not work with these. It may work with this. Now that I don't hate, and it may work with this, and that I don't hate. Do you see how the fabric just flipped it on you? And you hated it with this. Like, I hated it with this. Like, that looks horrible. But you add just a hint in there, and those work. Hmm. And I don't know where I got this, but that's that pink, and that looks great with that. Yeah? 
It's a really pale pink. Really pale pink. Uh, we talked about those last time. Here, let's... Oh, let's look at these. So this is kind of a modern. We talked about that last time. This was that Project Runway piece. I think it looks fine. Now, I'm going to be more interested in this with it than I may be with some of these with it, just because of the style of the pattern. You know, that's the other thing that painters don't take into consideration, that I think as quilters we have to. Um, we aren't just looking at one color. We're looking at all the colors that are printed in that fabric, and does that work together? Um, that seem, that would be interesting. That's interesting. I think I like it more, I think I like that a little bit better. Definitely a starker color. Very, but I do love this. That's got some great greens in it. That looks good. Of course it's blue, you know, and you're pulling in all these blues with it. So look good with that. Uh, I don't know. It would work with that. See, to me, this works fine. Maybe it's the theme of these that I'm kind of like, I don't know. And it works with that fine, too. That looks good together. I like that. Uh, you may be right. That pink and indigo may be an old cotton and steel. You may be right. You may be right. Okay, wait. Let me pull the red. I did pull some reds. Red and yellow. Let's look at red and How are these not going to go with blue, red, and yellow? Classic. I, I think we're just going to find red is and yellow are going to always go with blue. They're the primary colors. We're never going to get away with that. I, they're just always going to go together. Now, again, these prints also kind of fit with that. They kind of have the same size. They're all kind of swirly, so we're looking at not only the color, but we're looking at the pattern of the print, you know, that's going to add to it. Now, does it go with this with all that pink? Maybe not. I mean, that I would be hard-pressed to say that's perfect with it. The yellow I think you could get away with, but the red may not be as popular. I do like it with the owls, though. It looks great with the owls kind of thing. So, in that, I think that's it. All the other ones on here are more. Well, so there we go. Indigo. It goes with everything. I mean, they're blue jeans. It's our blue jeans, and our blue jeans go with everything. So, anyway, thanks for joining me, but I do want to tell you one more thing. So, I know everybody's talked about we want to do a stitch along. We are going to do it. So mark on your calendars, and I'm going to give you more information later, but mark on your calendars the first Monday of July. Um, I'm going to start a stitch along. So, and you'll get a new block every two weeks, and I'll give you much more details later on it. But what's going to be different about this stitch along is I have a quilt done, and you'll be learning how to do all the blocks in that quilt. Totally learning how to do that. But... I'm going to make it more than just a stitch along because a stitch along what we do is you take the same block and everybody makes the same block. But because I'm into color and because I'm into design, I want to teach you 13 blocks, right? I'm going to teach you how to do 13 blocks in this stitch along. And those 13 blocks can be used to make over a thousand quilts. No problem. So. Um, I'll give you tons more detail yet, but put on your calendar the first Monday of July, and we're gonna, that's the day we're gonna start. We'll drop the first video, but we're also gonna have some lives that if you wanna get involved in a Zoom link, and you would be live with me in a Zoom link, we can talk about your color, your design, all that kind of stuff. So more details to come, you'll find out more about it in June, but first Monday in July, we will start the stitch along and I'll give you more information on what you've probably not seen this quilt because uh, I think um, it's it's going to be new to you so um, 
first Monday in July is is that the fourth? I mean, you can watch it any time during that, but that's when the the video will become available because I know I'll be eating hot dogs that day. Just saying. So I'm currently in the process of prepping all of the looks for you, but I wanted you to just kind of tease you with what we're going to be doing and get you excited about it so that we won't just talk about color, but we'll talk about design and how that works and all that other kind of stuff. So anyway, all right, so join me Tuesday. It really works that I post these on Sundays because I don't have a ton of stuff. My weekends get so busy. Um, so I'm going to try to go live again on next Sunday for us to do the next color. But Tuesday's when I'll grab the color that our next crayon. I don't know what it'll be, but I've enjoyed indigo. I liked indigo. Like indigo's good. Goes with everything. I think that's what we found out. So anyway, I will talk to you all later. And y'all.